Welcome everyone to the Foul Play YouTube channel. Hope everybody's doing well today. We are at uh, Open Mic 197. And today we're going to kind of take it a little easy, I guess. And we'll listen to some more calls. Today we're going to be listening to, uh, we're at no, uh, November 5, November 5, 2005, Channel 7. And you'll see here in a minute when I pop it up, this batch of calls is 2 hours and 18 minutes. As always, I'm going to be just fast forwarding right through the irrelevant stuff. As we've seen, we've had quite a bit of that. Anyway, hope everyone's had a uh, good Easter uh Wherever you, wherever you are in your part of the world, did a, a Easter egg hunt or whatever with the kids. And, or adults, too, I guess. I don't know. I guess adults do that. So uh, I know my grandkids did it. Uh, not here, but at other, other family members' houses and so forth. So thanks for joining us. I know it's a holiday. I wasn't going to do anything, but I thought, you know, it's going to be a little bit later in the evening. Uh, some people sure have Easter dinner, but uh, a lot of people for a lot of people, you know, mid afternoon they're pretty much done with uh, Easter. So why not? Why not listen to some calls? Uh, anyway, I'm gonna let uh, everyone here say hello, and we'll greet everyone that's in the live in the live chat with us so far. And then we're gonna get started. So first we have Kay. How are you today? I'm good. Just having a lazy day here today. Um always always fun to hear these calls Absolutely. it's always something it is every batch <laughs> yep that's right well i know uh you know before we started we heard sam he's definitely having a, a lazy day he was snoring really really nicely so good for him anyway thank you for coming Kay and sheree how are you i'm good Hi, everybody, and welcome to Open Mic. Thanks for coming, Cherie. And then uh, Miss Blockham Razor. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I just thought I'd invite you all to a live resurrection. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> I'll Mrs. Blockham's Razor before I shortly go to bed but i thought i'd pop in for a while just to show people that i'm still alive even though i was killed on friday i understand and, and hung out to dry but like this morning <laughs> i rolled that rock back and i'm here looking forward uh, to it, folks <laughs> well appreciate you coming it's a little late for you and your part of the world but uh yeah it is anyway. like the hour's gone forward today so uh it's like it's now back at our normal time of uh, five past eleven. Oh yeah, well, so there you go. The problem is there is a bank holiday tomorrow, so we do have Easter Monday to get through. So I promised myself I'm going to bed. Well, so we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it works out, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, thanks for coming. So. Um, Kay, can you uh, say hello to those that have joined us so far and said something in the live chat while I pop this on screen? Uh, okay, may have stepped away. She may have fell asleep. She's having oh, a lazy... Oh, sorry. That's all right. No, I was multitasking over here. Um, JD, Scooby the Dog, Double D, Jazz Naz Gaming, J Jax. Pete Moss, Rhonda SD, Passive Bear, Trav, Under Your Scars, I Don't Recall, Duke Juke 11, Colette M, and True Crime Fangirl. Look at there. That's right. All righty. Well, I appreciate everyone that's um, joined us. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, two hours in 18 minutes, I'm probably, you know, wherever this lands, whatever time, we're probably just going to call it when this is done. Uh, that way we don't get started on another day and another channel and not be able to get to it. Because I don't, it's, I mean, if we, you know, there's going to be times we're probably not going to be able to get through 
it had already happened once uh, an entire uh, string of calls in a particular channel or day uh, and have to split it I'm gonna try to avoid that if I can and make it one complete thing so alrighty we've got everything up on screen I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, I again questions put a cue in the in the in front and we'll try to get to it I'll try to watch the the chat and get these uh, highlighted so we can get to them later otherwise here we go Hey, McCoy, Sheriff, emergency. Yes, uh, this is Dean Schrader. Uh, I'm rushing my wife to the hospital. She's complaining of very uh, fast heart rate. Before I roll on, I need to kind of explain something because the screen, that you, as you can see on the left, has changed. And you guys may not care about this, but I'm going to explain it to you anyway, just so you know. This is different than what you've been seeing. This player has an autoplay function, and Zoe and I didn't know about it at first. We made these calls, recorded these calls. But basically, you can load every call and whatever you want above, and then there's an autoplay function that will just automatically play. And you, we didn't, we don't, so we didn't have to click on every single file. Which I know you guys didn't see that before, but. Uh, that's exactly what we were having to do. Every single audio file that you see list, we were having to double click to go to the next call, next call. This way we didn't have to. So it was much better, much easier to, to deal with. And but but you can still see, you know, each line, uh, the channel, the date and the time, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, just thought I would explain that for the nerds out there. I, I think this is a relevant call anyway, but uh Let's move on. I'm going to share with on 114. Okay. Do you need an escort, you think? or? Well, I'm. she's not doing very good. She's telling me it's getting worse. So, yes, I'm going to unsure what deal right now. Yeah, this okay, is wrong. Can you go to one? Is she a uh, paramedic intercept to you? Or? Uh, maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah, whatever. Honey? Uh, just hold one minute here. Just hold on as you're going. Red your key. I'm just going to see. Uh, okay. Calm down. Oh yeah. I need a I need to intercept the guy who's on his way to St. E to having a food giving your pigeon in. He's coming on the highway ten. You're going yeah. you're going at two seconds. Hey two six last twenty is ten and LP. The officer's going to wait for you at fire lane 3. Okay. Okay, still yeah, the same call. Uh, okay. The ambulance. Okay, yeah. yeah I, I, okay, just pull over. Yeah. Kelly, okay, Kelly, Sheriff. Hi, this is Megan calling from Channel 2. Just wondering if you have anything new for me to, oh, from overnight. Let me put you in hold a minute and see if there's an update on the missing person. That would be great. Thank you. No news or no updates? No updates? No. Nope. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You bet. Bye. Bye. Call you at 911 10th Street. I have a cardiac history. Chest pain on scene, state of the day. Well, they, cardiac history. They really like that tone, don't they? God almighty. North 10th Street. For some. Street. Hello, Roger. Street 22 or 1076. And Fort Hilbert Potter. On scene. Responder 329, McCann McCauley Banks, all first responders found on scene. 10-4. McCann McCauley Sheriff's Office. Hi, this is Teresa with the Hilbert Potter First Responders. Could I have our time, please? 
Do you have times for a little potter? Yep. Yes. Hi, this is Jesse from Channel 5 of Green Bay. I was wondering if there was any kind of report this morning. Nope, nothing today. Okay. All right. Hello. Hi, is this Dan? Yep. Is this Sheriff's Department? Yes. I've got a vehicle that needs a flatbed. Okay. It's um two tenths of a mile south of Gladwater Beach Road. Okay, irrelevant. It's missing a couple of tires, so I'll be heading up. We um we saw an issue. I'm a county sheriff's office. Hi, good morning. Can you tell me, um, we saw on a news this morning they're going to be doing a search um, for Teresa Holbach. Can you tell me where they're meeting? Do you have any idea? Um, hold on a second. Okay. I don't know. You don't? You don't. No. Okay. Yeah, because we were going to go there because we saw it. I thought, well, we're going to go and help, but I don't know where that is. Yeah, I don't know either. You don't. <laughs> they haven't given us any information. I know that there's something going on, but that's all I know. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Now, I'll pause again here for a second. I know it's hard for you to see, um, but each one of these on the left, that's the call that's playing. It's hard to see the time. That's why I changed the quality. It's 6 0 No, wait. It's 6.50 a.m., it's right there. The times are listed here on the far right. 6.50 a.m. Continuing. Yes. So, yeah, this is uh, Ronald Rinky. Yes. Anyway, I was uh, using the kids' pickup truck last night, and uh, the rear end fell out of it. The tires fell right off. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, I got people... Uh, uh, coming with a, a trailer, and then we'll went on the trailer and, and we'll tow it. Do you have a phone number that the officer can call you at? Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, for Moving on. Mm -hmm. right, bye bye. Can I make the sheriff's office? Hi, this is Kate Giordana. Um, I'm the niece, one of the nieces, or one of the aunts of Teresa Hallbuck. And we're just wondering, um, does, does your sheriff's department deal with psychics at all? 8.07 a.m. That you do or no or? Not really. Okay. But if we found one to bring one in, would that, I guess we just do that on our own then? Um, yeah, I would talk to probably the sheriff about it, but I don't think that we would do anything with that. Okay. Okay. I was just wondering. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Kelly County Sheriff's Office. What's the name of City Hall's number, uh, office number? 4855. 4855? Mm-hmm. There you go. You're welcome. Yep. Kelly County Sheriff's Office. Hi, this is Megan calling from Channel 2. Just wondering if you have any more information on the missing woman. No, we do not. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye. Kelly County Sheriff's Office. Cayman, I have a gentleman on the line about a deer to be tagged. Oh, okay. <laughs> let me see if I'm an off. Um, <laughs> let me sign 114. What's that? Yeah. Where on Highway 10 and 114? Okay, I'm nowhere else by Captain Kidd. Ooh, there's a deer. Um, deer strike. That's away. What kind of vehicle? And you didn't hit the deer, you just want to tag it? Sure, uh, sure why don't you give me that? Okay, Charlie. Still, okay, still, still in the welcome. district. Can I my county sheriff's office? Uh, yeah, I'm calling because uh, I'm not sure what to do here. My uh, my car and my boat that were in my driveway were egged last night. Um, our mailbox was egged about a week ago. W five five. Okay. And um your name is? 
see from a sander. Officer, come and take a look at it. Yeah, it's just, it's just a waste of their time, though. Not necessarily. Well, then, in your phone. One. Can I make on the sheriff's office? Hey, um, it's trying to get them to hold the police department. Okay, I can get a message to him. There's nobody in the office today. Okay. Well, maybe you can help me. Um, my husband hit a deer on the way to work early this morning. Deer strike. Police department. I thought we had to do it. The officers in and out. You know, go get us and we'll. Okay. Can I have my county sheriff's office? Hey, I'm gonna have a, a controlled burn today. Your address? Uh, and your name is? Thank you. Can I my county sheriff's office? Hi, this is Dean Schultz from Circle Drive. I'm going to be burning. Oh, sheriff's office. Good morning, this is Detective Rimmiger from Manitowoc County. Good morning. Is Wiegert or Dieter in your I think Wiegert's in his office. Hold on. Thank you. Now I am. This is Mark. Detective Reminger is Rem on the line for you. Remiger. Yeah, from Manitowoc. Sure, do I gotta stay on the line or hang up? Uh, stay on the line. Got it. Go ahead. Niles. Sheriff's Department from Brilliant. Good morning, how are you this morning? Well, I'm fine, how are you? Good. Did you have Dave give me a call on my cell phone, please? Sure. Do yeah. you have that number? Oh, you did send him an MDC message. It's 851-3805. Okay. Thanks, ma'am. Sure. Bye-bye. Can I make county sheriff's office? Yes, good morning. Is uh, Investigator John Petering at this morning? Um, I'm not sure. Hold on. Can I have a county sheriff's office? Yes. Okay, let me try again. Hold on. Can okay. I have a county sheriff's office? Hey, I'm using your address. Um, I just had to think the note that I want to send to Wendy. Um, it's 206 okay. Court Street. Chilton. Okay. And uh, I know she's at which course is today, is that correct? Um, Saturday, and then I want to um, send her some summer. So um, I just want to make sure she's there when I send them. Um, and if I can't have Do you have an uh, investigator schedule for us? Wendy working today? Comes in at two o'clock. Oh, okay, she's working at two. Okay, and then if you're working Monday for Tuesday, I mean, just in case they can't remember today. Um, let's see. Monday. Also, Monday and Tuesday at two. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Bye. Bye. Kelly Murray County Sheriff's Office. Good morning, Mrs. Peter over at FC26. Did check this evening if you can? Uh, no. All quiet here. All okay. right. Thanks, Mike. Mm hmm. Kelly Murray County Sheriff's Office. How are you doing? This is today off the wall with the U.S. Coast Guard. Mm hmm. Um, one of my petty officers at uh, Station Milwaukee it, it called me and uh, said that the Linda Chapel was, uh, had saw the missing persons report or something. and. I wanted to get all the information. This is the callback number that they gave me. Okay. Um, reference was it Teresa Halbach or I think that's that's the missing person. But um okay. I needed more information. I didn't know whether the person was near the water when they went missing or anything like that. Cause in order for us to be able to conduct a search or whatever, I needed. To Somebody contacted you to see if you could search. Is that what you're saying? Well, that's the thing. I don't know. Like my my station called me, and uh, they said that uh, the a Linda Chapel had called them, and this is the number they gave me for her. Um. And that she's the one that had filed the missing persons report for Teresa Halbach. 
Hold on just a second. Hi, this Um, my sheriff is going to talk to the investigators. Can you just hold on the line for a sec? Sure. Thanks. Okay. All right, we'll try to see you now. Okay. Tell him county sheriff's office. Yes, hi. This is Bonnie Kirschman with NBC 26. We're going to get back to talk with someone regarding the uh, person, Teresa um, Alba. Uh, one second, please. Sheriff's Department for Brilliant. Hello, I was wondering if there are any officer, officers up there at the moment. Um, He's out in his squad. Yeah, I needed to make a statement. Would I be able to talk to someone about that? Sure. Are you up there now? No. I'm at home just wondering if there's anyone up there that I can talk to to report this vandalism that happened the other day. Sure, vandalism. Can't stop at your it's house. 10, 10 3 a.m. Yeah. Irrelevant. It was. Kelly McCallie Sheriff's Office. Hi, may I have a little information? Do you know if the road to 151 is open down to the lake? No, it's not. It's still not open. Probably next week, they're thinking. Yeah, which would be the easiest way coming from Fond Lake to, to the Chilton? And, 10, 12 uh, a.m. Somebody getting directions. He wanted to triple. People ages 10, where would that be about? Probably just wait, wait. Age to yes. Can I my county sheriff's office? Yeah, I was wondering if I could uh, get somebody else to probably take care of a trespasser. 10, 16 a.m. Trespasser, okay, irrelevant. Okay, do you know who this is? Uh, I have no idea. We've been dealing recently from this land to figure out what we're talking about. Continuing on. around the other the north end of the world. Pick up the line. And do you have a cell phone now? 274. It's right there, Gina. Okay. Can I make out a sheriff's office? Hello, my name is Lance Cooper, and I'd like to talk to somebody about, um, We've been getting what I would consider harassment on over our telephone, getting called every single day and every night. Irrelevant. And really what, five, anything else? Owen, this is Lori, 538. 1022 AM. 480. Pam Sturm's call is coming here shortly, I think. And she's getting your her address. And okay. And this is Calumet County? No, out of game. Okay. Did you call? Something. Eight three. Log. Tell County Sheriff's Office. Hi. This is Noel. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Hey, do you have some data telephone numbers? I do. Four one eight. Four zero eight six. Okay. Thanks a lot. Sure. Dispatch. Okay, I called to Ms. Mr. Pagel's answer machine. Here it is. Was on. Okay. Okay. Okay, we are at Avery Salvage. Okay. And this call is dated timestamp 102921. 1029. Okay, and we're searching for the vehicle. Right. For Teresa Hobart. We have found a RAV4. What? color specifically was her RAV4? And do you have a VIN number? Um, this vehicle is green. Box. Okay, this, I don't know, this is like a, you don't a want. bluish green. Okay, do you have a, do you have the ID number? Oh, hold on, hold on, number. hold on. You don't want, can you call this badge right away? Do we have a VIN number? A VIN number. And you heard her say at the beginning that she had tried to call Poggle and got his voicemail. So she's already called. Uh, I think she called actually twice. Anyway, moving on. It's not on the side, Nick. Go on the other side.
got a, hold on, here's um, Jerry. Hi, this is uh, Sheriff Hoggle. Oh, Sheriff Hoggle, hi. This is Pam Storm. I'm on the search for Teresa Holbeck, and we found a RAV4. You did? It's a, it's a bluish green, though. It's more blue than green. We just wanted to know if you got the VIN number for that vehicle. Yes, we do. We do have a VIN number. Don't get the VIN number. I can't find it on the... Where, where, is, where is the vehicle at? I'm at every salvage. Okay. It is all covered up. It's all covered up? Not all covered, but it's got a lot of stuff on it, branches. I don't have my glasses. Okay, branches over it. Yes. Um, where is the VIN Here's, number on something like this? Well, the VIN number would probably be on the windshield or underneath the by the, on the dash, driver's side. Yeah, driver's side. Next. Looks through the front window. Through the front window. Mm-hmm. I'll give you Investigator Wigert. He's got the phone or the VIN number here. Okay. Hi. Are you looking at it right now? Yeah, you know, we can't find that VIN number. What color is it? It is bluish green. Does it look like a newer one? Yeah, it's, it's the 99 to 2000. Is there any? It's more of a bluish green, though. That's why we don't want to put, you know. Is there any license that, plates on it? No plates on it, but it's a little. But the what, Pam? A little covered up. It's weird. It's covered up. Okay. Our, Some which, of this. Can you get to the front of the car? Yeah, I will. It's Lemieux Toyota sticker on it. Does okay. that have a... I don't know that? if they had a Lemieux Toyota sticker on it. I don't know about that. Is that okay if I go in the car? No, do not go in the car. Do not touch the car. Yeah. Stay well. on the outside of the car. Go over to the front on the driver's side. Yeah, I, I realize that. I'm in the business, so I kind of know, but I can't find a VIN number. I'm picking up the wipers. Okay. There is... can't find the VIN number. Isn't that funny? Well, here it is, Nick. I don't have my glasses. You don't have your glasses right either. There. My daughter's with me. Okay. Okay, now hang on. The first, last four digits... 3044. Four. Okay, hold on. i got to find it here again. 3044? Okay. Four, four? Yes. Okay. Can you go even more in? I don't know. Nick, can you look at any other numbers? Uh, there's some people out here, so we have to be careful. And, you know, um, there's some, uh, I don't know if they're employees or okay. who they are, but they're like. Why would she have to be careful? She's got, she said she had permission to be on the property. What is she suggesting? I always found this a really strange add in, Bob. Pam of God. Anyway, moving on. Okay, Nikki. Just Can you see any other numbers? Yeah. See it real slow, Nick. Can't see the very beginning numbers, but here goes. T zero Z five X seven a one or a T a one or a T. Okay, where are you? Three zero. Is that the number? Where are you? No, you're gonna tell me if this is the car. Okay, stop. I can't tell you anything. Where are you? I'm at Avery Salvage. Okay, are you on their property? Yes, I am. With their it permission or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, stay right where you are. Do not touch anything. Do not go anywhere around that vehicle. Stay are right you? where. What's your phone this? number? Is this it? I don't know that. Okay. What's your phone What's number? What's your phone number, Nick? Nine two zero nine four one zero two one one. I'll call my lawyer. This is long distance. You need to dial the entire number. Okay. Stay where you are. Do not touch the vehicle. Do not let anybody else touch the vehicle. Don't touch it. Don't touch it, Mike. And I will be calling you shortly. Okay. Well, I hope you can get me. You know. Okay. Just stay where you are. I'll find you. Well. We asked this guy real nice to come in here, so I hope... If you have a problem, you dial 911. Gotcha. We'll be on our way. We're going to have somebody over there as soon as possible. All right. Okay, thank you. Bye. Any comments about... Bye. Anyone? Nothing from... Have you to, have has anybody ever tried to justify why 
they don't say anything about Teresa. You know, I know we've talked about this, but I didn't know if you've ever had. No, no. We have no idea. There was no discussion or even mentioning trying to find Teresa. Nothing. And we don't, you know. Yeah. It really is. Andy, any commentary? Oh. No, not the moment. It's uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a strange phone call, but um, <sighs> apart from like the um, uh, there's people out here and the uh, the, Come you know, the strange buy and stuff. Like it's very hard to kind of um analyze it really so uh yeah there's nothing exceptional like kind of stands out to me on on this call yeah there's still, um go ahead i was gonna say am i still here like because my headphones kind of keep going in and out and just uh just want to make sure yeah oh yeah i can hear you fine okay you can cool. hear us yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of, I mean, as Sheree pointed out, there was no, uh, any sign of Teresa. Uh, is she in the car? Nothing. Uh, you know, maybe that was an oversight. Maybe they weren't thinking on those terms. I, I you know, I don't want to put anything, any thoughts in their head, but I, I mean, I think if I was a lead investigator, that would have been my first question. Any sign of Teresa? And it just didn't happen at all. I mean, if that call is complete, and I mean, I'm going to say that it, I can't prove that it is because, you know, we don't have a continuous loop of call, uh, the the continuous stream. Uh, Anything could be, I mean, if there's calls that go across multiple files, we can kind of track how long a call is supposed to be. But we don't really have too much of that going on here, a little bit, but. It's really um, such an odd call. I mean, I'm in the business, I know, but you don't know where a VIN number is on a vehicle. Like, that's right. Is that, is that odd? I mean, that Very odd. odd. Very odd to me that she didn't know immediately where that VIN number was. And she's a the private whole, investigator. Yeah, the whole call is just strange. It is, and then, you know, she's, oh, you, you got to tell me, is this the car? You know, it's like a game or something. It's, it's so strange. Uh, you know, and the color, you know, if we get back into the color of this RAV, you know, she says it's blue-green. And I get, I mean, from, this is just from my personal um, speculation. That's what I see, too. So, um, it's Nan's last see here. In last opinion, Pam was asked to go check every salvage yard, and Pam was possibly feeling an old sh- oh shit moment. Yeah, that, that's very possible. And I also think that, uh, you know, that was also, uh, you know, and, and I don't know how, how one thing happened or another. I just, as we discussed yesterday on the reading with the crew, I think Doc made a very strong presentation that. That rat wasn't there the day before on the 4th. It wasn't there. And now all of a sudden, here we go the next morning. And she arrives late. She says she has to go to the Avis Tower Jordan, which I, I really don't understand that at all. Because Ryan and Scott both knew that Teresa had an appointment at the Avis Tower Jordan, And they hadn't asked anyone to go there. And Pam comes in all of a sudden and says, hey. Has anyone went to the Avery Sour Yard? Well, I know. Would you like to go? And she's the only one, as far as we know, given a camera. Um, I won't say a map, but a, 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 maybe it was a map or a drawing or whatever. And Poggle's direct cell phone. It's also really strange that Dispatch had no clue that a search was going on. I mean, at the very yeah. least, Hoggle could have given her Ryan's phone number so she could get all the deets. 
Yeah, that uh, that seems that I mean I don't know really uh, other cases from Wisconsin, but you know uh, it it just seems odd that because they hadn't found her or the car that, that you know they weren't interested in being a part of any of the volunteer searches going on until until the morning of the fifth, and now they want to use them. That's another, you know, part of this that is unexplainable. All of a sudden, now they want to be involved with the search effort. You would think that law enforcement would, I mean, if this wasn't a setup, you would think that law enforcement would want to search that property because, I mean, they're already on Avery's case about it. Well, they've been there twice, so... Um, they really kind of shot themselves in the foot by not doing that, at least by the second uh, search, you know, come in with a search warrant just to do a, an overall scanning of the property. Not necessarily, a, a, you know, a highly invasive search, but to see if that car was there. It would take it a, you know, 20, 30 minutes for several officers to walk through and see if that 99 Toyota RAV4 was on the property. Done. Boom. Mm-hmm. That didn't happen. So once they, you know, had made contact twice and had found nothing, been in his trailer, uh, they're really kind of they they really kind of stubbed their toe because now if they go back to the judge, and say, well, we've been there twice and we didn't see anything, but we want a search warrant. They would have, and they had no prob- other probable cause, none. So they really, they really kind of shit the bed on that one. Pardon my French. I think the only strange thing about the call, like kind of thinking about it now, obviously the, uh, there's things around the uh, the details around how long it took them to uh, to search the uh, the salvage yard after getting uh, like permission from Earl, and the time she arrived at uh, like Teresa's house and the facts sent by Pagel and the other fella etc is um is like he's knowing the the year of the vehicle uh without the um uh the uh, the license plate being on there yeah it's a 99 like to 2000 like i wouldn't know unless there was a license plate on on a car you know what year it would be yeah, that uh, was a weird comment by her. She said, "Yeah, it's the '99 to 2000." Yeah, I mean, I unless mean, she's a car. I mean, some people are very astute about you know car models and so forth. Um, and no offense to women out there, um, I, I've not really met that. I mean, I've met a few that they know they know their cars, but I, I can just honestly say it really hasn't been that many, especially about you know foreign cars. I mean. It, you know, used to model 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 changes uh, or uh, year changes a lot of times would produce a pretty significantly different looking vehicle. And I got to tell you, I probably wouldn't have known, but even back then, I probably wouldn't have known the difference between a a ninety nine and a two thousand four Rav four personally. So I thought that was a weird comment too, Andy. Mm. Very strange. Yep. Let's look at a few more comments here before we continue. Because you have to remember now, this is the linchpin. This is where everything changes. Everything. We, you know, once this event occurs, they basically, within 20, 30 minutes here, they're going to seize that property. That That's the plan, and they're going to they're seal it up. Everybody's that's there is going to get questioned, and they're going to get escorted off the property. And they're going to lock it down from the 5th until the 12th. So uh, everything changes at this point. Um, and it really ramps up. Jane Jane of Dane says, Pam, sounds like a, a triumphant dimwit. <laughs> well, that's, that's a pretty great way of putting it, in my opinion. She's in the business but can't find a bin and doesn't, doesn't, no, not to touch touch it the, the the car. 
Yeah, and we know that Nicole tried uh, all four doors. She did. She had already done it. It was, you know, probably at that point too late. Um, you know, again, we've covered this at, at nauseum. Uh, they got to that car quickly because, uh, again, remember, this call came in at 1029 or 1028, whatever the hell it was. Um, and then she caught Pam tried to call Poggle at least once, if not twice. And then she called dispatch. And it, yeah. So you could probably subtract a couple of minutes at least from the, at the, this call that we just listened to. So well, let's just say 10, 26, 10, 27 ish time frame. So if they didn't start walking on the property till a little after 10, I, I just honestly and reasonably don't. I don't believe that they walked from the office there all the way down that length of car, you know, kind of below the pond there, all the way down and found that car that quick. I just don't. It's that's not a short walk. You think it is, but it's really not. There are people that have actually made that walk from the parking lot there. And you, you can't just it's it's a it's a hike. So anyway, let's move on a few more comments here. Um, James Crane, one of them should have mentioned it. She was an investigator. Yep. And I put this up a minute ago. Anthony Hill, she's performing, Jack, and I believe that too. I just do because she did the same thing in the pre-trial and the and the trial. And she backs off. Danny Brewer fan, she backs off a thousand feet and keeps her eyes on the car like it could have been seen from that far away. Yeah, you know, for um, just thinking about distance, a thousand feet is over three football fields. Hundred yards is three hundred feet, so that's over three football fields away. Uh, you know, but even back when I could see really well, I, unless you've got binoculars, you're not going to keep anyone away from uh, anything at a thousand feet. Come on, man, that's crazy. Uh, what else we got? Um, Jane of Dane, if I were in the business, I'd be looking looking for footsteps around the car. That or you know anything matted down, Teresa's body, anything. I mean, her car's there. Um, this is a Jane of Dane. This is another Ryan caused event, like into info about the broken light. <laughs> yeah, he really stubbed his toe on that one. Um. JD, at the start of the call, they said dispatch. What phone number did Pam of God did Pam of God telephone? Um, yeah, that call was kind of clipped at the beginning. I, I don't know. I I think that she may have testified that they had to look it up. I, I can't. I said there's something about that. I'm just not. It's been too long since I read it. I, I can't re recall precisely what she said, but I, I do believe she said they had to call information or, or look it up or something. I, I can't recall exactly. Hey, hello, Mary Cop. Thanks for thanks for dropping in. Happy Easter. Um, what else we got before we move on? Hey, Hugh. Hugh says, hi all, just started listening and we're, we're on Paga. I always think her late start ex explains the ya, ya idiot tone adopted by Paga and Uyghur to her and the amazing fast discovery of the RAV4. Yeah, it, it was really amazing. It was. And I don't think we're stretching the imagination. Uh, you know, the, in Cam, they, they tried to Deflect that down and say no, no, it's not. They didn't. They did just walk. Just go drive straight down there. Um, okay. Then how did they look at fifty or sixty cars, looking inside each one and make it to that vehicle that quickly? Unless their time was completely wrong. It's the only other thing. Uh, what else we got here?
I don't understand how Pago was in the office on Saturday, but then again, boss has a change of plans. Yeah, you know, there was one night, and maybe Duke can remember, or someone else. It, it, um, we discovered that, uh, this has not been too long ago, that Poggle actually stayed in the office all night. And I don't know if it was the, I think it was the 4th or the 5th. He stayed there all day and all night and into the next day. And, yeah. Wasn't it the 7th into the 8th? I'm sorry. Uh, wasn't it the seventh into the eighth? It could have been. It, it could have been Andy. I, I just can't remember uh, precisely which day it was. Yeah. But I, I, is that people, what you're? Is that what you're thinking? Seventh into the eighth? It could have been. I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I remember hearing it in a call. I think or he was saying it to somebody. But well, I. I, I I'm just remembering somebody saying, did he stay there all night? And the dispatcher said, I'm not sure. I, I can't recall. Um, T1, what's up? Hi, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> My question is, when Pog called the dispatch and asked for Poggle, the dispatch didn't hesitate at all putting him, her through. Totally not SOP, and you're right. And we pointed that out. It, uh, it it may have happened one other time, and you know, many 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 calls. Generally, it's just like, oh, he's out of the office. Do you want to leave a voicemail? It's pretty much the standard reply. Nan slash Pam testified that she and her daughter checked every car along the way. <laughs> Pam lies, in my opinion. Yeah, well, I I have to agree with you. Uh, Anthony Hills, who saw Pam sitting in the back of a squad car laughing? Um, yeah, I don't recall that one. Back to my question as to when Poggle stayed all night. Duke says, I want to say it was the 5th and the 6th, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I just can't recall. I just... There's strong indication that there was at least one stretch there that he stayed overnight, which is for a sheriff to do that. Hey, that's great, but why? You got plenty of investigators. Delegate, man. Delegate. Uh, never has dispatcher put a call straight through to the sheriff without identifying the caller and the matter they're calling about. Never. Yeah, I agree. I agree, T. Duke, it sounds like the dispatch was expecting her call. Well, it, it kind of did. And I would love to, I'd love to hear the beginning of that call. But again, it's another one. That, that's kind of why I pointed this out. It's going to happen more uh, as we continue through these calls. And those that have been, you know, dedicated to listening, uh, this happens a number of times. And it can it continues to happen. It's really frustrating, too. All righty. Um, I've rambled on enough. Again, questions, put a cue in. I'll try to catch them as we're going through. But again, this is where everything changes. Everything. It, it really ramps up, and we're going to start hearing more, well, interesting calls. And we're probably still going to get a deer strike or two or somebody, some burglary, and I'll, scan, I'll skip through them. But uh, let's continue on. Time for Brilliant. Yes, could uh, you have an officer come back here? I need some uh, forms from him. Where? At the City Hall. At the City Hall? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm by. County my County Sheriff's Office. Did he call in? Who? Bart. Yeah. What's going on? Well, Craig had some information that he has a cabin up north. Oh, uh, I thought I heard sirens in the background. He, he probably did. Hey, no, that was Mark that called in. Yeah. Where is he going with Siren on? He's going to El Avery Salvage Yard. Like Siren? I don't know about you all, but it sounds like she's hesitating to answer. They kind of both are, knowing they're being recorded. I've noticed this before in other calls. It's like they're hedging, being around the damn bush. 
it's anyway. Yeah. Did they find something or what? Yes, they did. What? I think they found the vehicle. Oh, okay. Yeah, I knew that, but okay. All right, 10, I thought something else. Ten fifty-five a.m. Nope, that was all. Okay, I thought they found her or something. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. okay goodbye. <laughs> Didn't you ask about her? Sheriff's Department for Brilliant. Um, yeah, I have a question. Um, do we need a police report for insurance purposes if my husband's truck got keyed? No, you can just call your insurance company. Okay. Your address? The address would be... Uh, call your insurance company. Oh, um. Okay. All right. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, a budded call. Kelly County Sheriff's Office. Good morning. This is Todd Whitman. I'm calling in because I filed for a uh, Okay. Your address? The address would be, uh, it'd be Coop Road. Did they call it? Okay. All right. All right. Thanks for calling. I don't know what that was. Kelly I couldn't hear it. County Sheriff's Office. Hi, Ray. Here. Hi. Could you look up uh, a report I did on a Stephen Avery? On a what? His name is Steve Avery. In oh four? Yeah, in oh four. Okay. Um did you hear? Did you all hear what he said? I don't. I don't know who this is, but he said, "Can you look up a report I did on Stephen Avery in '04?" I forgot about this call. Continue on. Oh, we're at 11:30 um, a.m. I'm sorry, 11:13 a.m. Is, is there two of you working right now? Uh huh. Okay. Can you pull up that complaint and read that report over? And just see if there's an address that's mentioned. Okay. Um, north. Have enough north with pictures for Jason. Uh huh. Um, I don't believe it. I mean, it's over a year old, but I don't believe it. Fine. Well, you want to call me back right away at home? Okay. Okay, thanks. Mm hmm. Bye. You can tell that call was completely cut up, especially the last two or three there. Kelly McCauley, Sheriff's Office. Hi, this is Ashley Coulter from Weber Self Serve. I just had a gas drive off. Okay, what direction did it go? J. And dark on 56 on a new twenty dollars and one. Hi, this is Gary. I can't get to my phone. Let me message you. Hello? Hi. Hi. Um, Anything to get a description of where it was? It just says a cabin up north. Okay. Near a city or anything or on a road? Up in a cabin located on High Falls Lane. High Falls. It's described as a dead end road 30 miles west of Cribbett. The cabin is owned by Candy's father-in-law. New cabin leaving on Friday and coming back on Sunday. Okay, High Falls Lane. Now, gosh, I think I know where that is. <laughs> oh, did they say 30 minutes north of Crivet? 30 miles west of Crivet. 30 miles. Hey, can you look at like the state of Wisconsin map and see 30 miles what the curve it's what? I think there was a PD up there too. I don't know if that's in the report. But... This may be Gary Steyer. I'm not sure. And this call is at 11.21 a.m. High Falls 
clean on a dead end of the road. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to West. See, A goes out there. W goes out there. What well, county are we in? This, it would be um, Marinette. And their daughter. The cabin is owned by Candy's father-in-law, Alan Avery. On a dead end part of the road. Says every weekend for a couple of months, up in a cabin located on High Falls Lane, which was described as a dead end road, 30 miles west of Privet. See, in High Falls is over off of County X. If you take A out of Crivet, High Falls flowage is off of X. Okay. I, uh, I don't think I have this. Is there any description of the trailer, what it looks like? Brown, white. Is the uh, cedaring working today too? Mm-hmm. Hold on just a sec. Sure. Well, County, my county sheriff's office. Hey, I need a phone number for Marinette County Sheriff's Department. Okay. I'm on the phone with Gary. Don't be yelling at me. Come on. 30 miles west of Crivitz. Hey, I need a phone number for that, please. You're in the police department. 30 miles west of Crivitz, what? We talking? That's where the cabin is. Is there an address in there? No. On High Falls Lane. What? On High Falls Lane. Okay. Marinette Police Department phone number, area code 715. Get Sheriff's Department. Oh, there it is. 715-732-7627. Okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. Sheriff's Department. Hi, this is Fuzzy Wien calling from the Student Home in Brilliant. How are you doing today? I'm busy. How's it going? Uh, uh, yeah, I understand. Uh, I'm fine. Can you let the city officer know that I've got a funeral leaving the funeral home about 145? Moving on. And... Right. Okay. Hello. I'm right. Okay. You don't see anything okay. describing the cabin. Thank you. Um. Notice it was just another cutback from that other call. Just boom, just cut back. Again, in my opinion, another edit. I gave the information to Weigert. Okay, what's he just on the other line? Right? Yeah. Okay. He's going, he got Marinette County Sheriff's Office phone number. So they got a cell phone number. They have to check their property record. Yeah. For Ellen Avery. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as far as I know. All right. Well, that's uh, that's what he wanted. So I was just helping him try to find his more and that's what I'm calling you right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. What did you say? Anything? They found the body? Or they found the car? They found the vehicle. That's all they found. But they where are they at? Steve Salvage. <laughs> Steve Salvage Auto. No. They her car. Avery's, yeah. Yeah. Yep. 
All right. Yep. Calumet County Sheriff's Office. Hi, Maria Siri. Hi. Um, Manitowoc County is turning the case over to us because of the fact that... 12, 11 p.m. The case is handed over to, Cal to Calumet County. So an hour, 44 minutes or so after the rat is found, boom. Uh, the case gets handed over. Let me back that up five seconds, and we'll continue to listen to Poggle. Well, County yeah. is turning the case over to us because of the fact that Steve Avery's involved. Um, I have made a call to the uh, DCI. I've talked to the uh, Jim Warren. Head of DCI, they're going to send agents, state agents, out to assist us. Okay. What I need you to do is get a hold of five individuals that can assist us in securing the crime scene out here. Um, this is on scheduled overtime, so go down the list by seniority. However, get a hold of Gary Steyer. Uh, oh, Mark's going to call Gary. Uh, we're going to see if he's able to come out and assist. But uh, have them dress in uniform and uh, wear warm clothing. And uh, probably bring two or three squads over if they can use the transport vehicles. Okay. You can get five. If, we'll see what Gary's going to say. Okay. I'll give us six, and then we'll have enough individuals over here. All right. And uh, tell them we don't know how long it's going to take. Uh, it could be all nighter. Okay. But uh, if need be, we'll get replacements uh, as we go along. Okay. All righty. I will yeah. let you know. Okay. Thank you, Marie. You're welcome. Bye. Calumet County Sheriff's Office. Hi, yes. Uh, my name is Josh Wilson over, over on Irish Road. And uh, I've had some problems with people dumping garbage on my road. And uh, now hey. uh, this time Moving uh, on. I'm wondering how do I go? Thank you. Thank you. Address? W5451 Highway 10. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. N68 Irish Road. N1068. Oh, okay. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Oh, no. Well, actually, a month or two, pick them up first. Oh. Okay. What? Okay. Well, okay. Again. Hey. I need one more. Kelly no. County Sheriff's Office. Hey, it's Noelle again. Hey. I need one more number. Okay. Do you have Death Hard phone number? Seven eight eight five nine six three. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Bye. Hello? Hi, is Rick there? This is the Sheriff's Department. No, he's gone. He's been gone since Tuesday. Oh. Up north. He's on vacation. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye. This is Marie at the Sheriff's Department. We need some bodies to um, take over with a crime scene. Um, if you could give me a call as soon as you get this, we're going to be, need, be needing five people. So give me a call. Thanks. Bye. Hi, Ronnie up the Hi, Ronnie Abel Dan, your call right now. Your name and number, and we'll get back to your case. Yeah, I'm having some difficulties with my computer. It's just a little system here, and I think my case is done. Gary, this is. 
Murray at the Sheriff's Department. We need five bodies to um, secure a crime scene. If you could give me a call back at the office, it's 12:22. Thanks. 12:18 on my, my according to the call. 12:18. That's weird. Hello. Hi, Dan. Yeah. It's Murray. Um, we need five bodies. <clears throat> We're doing. Um, we found the vehicle. Okay. And they need people to assist at the to secure the scene. Okay. Um, uh, I don't have a babysitter until my wife gets back, probably oh. two or three hours from now. Okay. Um, why don't you give me a call back then if you want to come? Okay. I'm not sure, you know, how many people I'm going to get, so. Okay. We'll give you a call back as soon as uh, she gets home. Okay, sounds good. All right, bye. Thanks. Twelve twenty one. Eight eight six nine eight seven eight. Please leave us a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you. Mosley, this is Marie at the Sheriff's Department. We're gonna be needing if you could give me a call back. This is Marie at the Sheriff's Department. If you could give me a call. Jennifer Bass. Yep. Twelve twenty-three. Moving to twelve twenty-four. Take your call. Please leave a message. Hey, this is Jen. Sorry, I missed your call. Please leave a message. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks. Bye. To leave a voice message, press 1 or just wait for the tone. To send a numeric... Hey, Jen, this is Marie at the Sheriff's Department. We're looking for seeing some bodies. Hey, yeah, if you could... Moving on. Thank you. Hello? Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, how am I doing? Yeah. I'm busy. Real busy? No, well, sort of. Why? Oh, okay. The call signs are ready to use. Sweet. Dishes are done. Thank you. Laundry, I got started. Okay, personal call. <laughs> oh, junky. Junky. Sorry, I'm sticking to it. Okay. Your first shifter and a third shifter. I probably won't be coming home. Dead. Marie at the Sheriff's Department. Yes. Hey, we we're wondering if maybe you would be available to assist at a crime scene today. Time. Well, as soon as you can get here and he doesn't have any clue at what time he you might go all night. Okay. Um, I'll get, can I get right back to you? I sure can. I'm running by my wife, but can you on anything Not a problem. All right, thanks. Thank you. I did. Tap the tone. Please enter your touch. Well, twenty eight number. Jason is coming in. Jerry? Yes. Um, Ken is coming in. Ken. Matusek. Okay. Um, Dan has to wait a 
couple hours before his wife gets home. He doesn't have a babysitter. Okay. And then he said he could come in. Okay. And that's the only people I got a hold of. Really? Everybody else, I left messages. Um, Rick Reamer is on vacation, so he's not anywhere around. Did you try Gary Schultz? I just paged him. Okay. I, I left a message on his home phone. Nobody was home, but I did page him now. Okay. Um, well, that's all we can get right now. Okay. You left messages for most of the other ones? Yes. I told them to give me a call back, no matter okay. what. Okay. 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 Um, well, when Ken gets there, have him wait for Dan, and uh, they can come over. Uh, and uh, I'll have Mark give you directions of how to get out here. I'll okay. give you a call so that you. It's not the easiest way to place the find, but we'll get you directions. Okay. Alrighty. Sounds good. Okay, thank you very much, and keep me informed. Will do. Okay, bye. Bye. Well, 32 p.m. Marie again. Just, um, Jerry made, wanted to make sure that you dress warm. Okay. Because you guys will be outside. All right. We'll do. All right. Thanks. I'm not able to take a call at this time. However, if you wish to leave a voicemail message, please do so after the tone, and I will return your call as soon as possible. Thank you, and have a great day. Jerry, this is Marie. I'm just wondering, do you want me to see if Billy's available? Um, let me know. All right, thanks. Okay. Hi, Andy. Yes. Hi, it's Jerry. Jerry. Yes. Um, Gary Schultz is also coming in. Okay. And we were wondering, do you want me to give Billy Tyson a call? Sure. He's yes. working. He's on the schedule 3 to 11 today, but he's an extra. He's an extra. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, uh, have him come over. Okay. Okay, we'll uh, give him a call. Okay. That then we've got, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, and we'll just uh, swap them around as we need them. Okay. All right, real good. All right, thanks. Okay, thank you. Hi. Is Hello. Hi. Hi. Is Bill there? Sure, hang on. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mr. Tyson. Yeah. Can you assist? <laughs> we found the car. Where at? In Manitowoc at okay. Steve Avery's salvage yard. Okay. And we're going to be needing people to help secure this crime scene. Okay. He's asking that um, you come in full uniform and dress warm, and they're going to need about two or three squads over there. Okay. So if you want to come in when you are available. Will do. Thank you very much. Sure. Bye. Steve Avery, Sour Jordan. It's all today. Kelly Murray County Sheriff's Office. Hey, Murray, it's Kelly. Hey. Who's working all today? Um, Craig is. You know what car he's in? Um. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Right here, 41, I'm here. There's Central 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 the boys are coming back from Milwaukee, and I was going to have them meet us out at uh, Gloria Day. 
Okay. Um, so there's going to be a kind of a large crowd of people following the bus thing, so. Okay. I'll give them a call. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. yep. Bye. Bye. Kelly McCauley Sheriff's Office. Hey, it's Jen. What's up? Hey. Do you want to go over to Manitowoc and assist with the securing a crime scene? Hmm, getting more details than that. <laughs> they found the vehicle. Did they? Yes. Okay. And they're going to need at least five individuals <clears throat> to stand by. They don't know for how long he's going to try and circulate people through, you know, as they come available. And he says it may be an all-nighter. Woo! Fun. All right, so they want us to uniform up, drive to Chilton, get a squad, or drive out Well, to what we're going to do is have everybody, you know, get in uniform, make sure you dress warmly because they're going to be outside, and then come to the sheriff's department, and we're going to be taking about two or three squads, or they're going to be taking two or three squads over there. So some people are going to be riding together. So if you just want to come here and then pair up with somebody. All right. How soon do you need me? Um, as soon as you can get here. All right. Give me an hour. I got to change and drive. So. Okay. Not a problem. All right. I'll be there soon. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye. Chandler County Sheriff's Office. Hey. Can I talk to your partner? My partner? Sure. Well, the other person is there. All right. Hold on. Twelve fifty three PM. Hi, this is Sheriff Jerry Toggle. Yes, ma'am. All right. Kelly McConnell Sheriff's Office. Yes, ma'am. All right, just a heads up, we're, um, I got five people now, but they're going to be securing the crime scene. Okay. And it's probably going to be an all-nighter. So I don't okay. know, you know, he's he said something about trying to rotate people through. So I'm not sure <clears throat> how he plans on doing it or anything like that, but just a heads up in case he might need some manpower. Okay. Later, it's Are they here. bringing in the state crime lab for this? They're bringing in the state, and okay. we have control of the whole thing. Okay. Did they find her yet at all, or is it just the vehicle? Just the vehicle. Okay. Well. So I don't know if you're going to be needed or not, but just for a heads That's up fine. in I case. Just... Last thing I want to call me, bring your evidence tech kit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> call the state. <laughs> no, no, there's too much there for this. Yeah, I, know. I know. I know there is. Okay. Wait. Yeah, he has so, contacted DCI, so. Are you saying that we're going to finish out our shift and go home for right now and then be contacted? For, or? for now, as far as I know, you'll, you guys will be going home, and then if, you know, we need somebody else. I gotta do, we know that. You know that. Mm -hmm. so. But I just wanted to give you a heads up. Thank you. You're welcome. Talk to you a little bit. Bye. Bye. One oh five PM. Hi, this is Sheriff Jerry Poggle. County Med County Sheriff's Office. Oh, this is the County Med County Sheriff. Yes, it is. Uh, you know that uh, there's a building in the whole scene on, uh, on Monroe Street in the whole scene. Uh, who owns that building? Do you do you know offhand? No, I don't. Who could I contact to see I'm being evicted or something like that? And you know. I have okay. Twenty three guys with dispatch. We'll be on it uh or you there for Hi, 
Hi, this is Sheriff Chair. Control 1022 is back in court. 10422. Sheriff's Office. Hi, it's Ken Kress. Can you give me Jerry Prago's cell phone number, please? 418-4081. I'm surprised I don't have that. I had it old when I got Mike or something, so that didn't work. So. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. 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 So Ken Kress calls in at 151 p.m. asking for Sheriff Poggle. First department. Hi, I was wondering if you could possibly send or find a uh, cop that's around the area on, I think it's 55, 155. There's a person that's driving in between traffic and like doing like 80 on the highway. Where is this on? On the one that comes out of Fond du Lac, 151. 151? Yeah. Okay, so what county are you in now then? I'm in my car. I'm actually what right in What county are you in? Calumet. You're in Calumet. Which way is the vehicle headed? Uh, towards Moving on. Stockbridge. To HYF? Six. Many officers in there to keep an eye on for For it. And what's the book about eight? First department. Hey, Scott. Is Marie still there? Nope. Uh, hold oh, on. Okay, let's call them. 819. <laughs> um, they found the vehicle from the missing person. Oh, really? Where did yeah. you find it? Avery's junkyard. Oh. So, um, I don't know who they're all. Hold on one second. Are you going to check? Who do you got on the line? I got Mary. So, would you be able to come in, Mary, at all? Okay. They're looking for people as, to stand by out there to hold the crime scene or something. Oh, for like all night? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, because I got no. a date. Okay. No problem. I'll pass it up. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Bye. Sheriff's Department. Hey, it's Jen. Yeah, Jen. Okay, for those directions they gave us out here. Yeah. Can you make an adjustment for everybody else? They need to go right on Avery Road. Okay. All right. What's on there? It says you'll see a squat turn there. That doesn't help us once we get out here, but the state's been directing us. Oh, so take a go three mile or what did it say? Go through Larage three miles and then what? Uh, yeah, it says go through Larby three miles. You'll see a squad turn there. Well, after the squad, you're going to take a right on Avery Road and then. So after you see the squad, take a right on Avery? Yep. Okay. Okay. I will let them know. All right. Thank you. Sure. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Why I, I, I just I wonder how many Manitowoc people we got out there. Why are we holding that scene? I just get stumped on it. Kelly. Kelly. Um those directions, um when it's at the end there it says you'll see a squad. Yeah. Turn there. It's gonna be it's gonna be Avery Road, take a right. Avery Road? Yeah. Okay. And then you'll right. head down that road and you'll see see 'em. No no problem, thanks. Okay. Bye. Hey Ned, yeah. Scott, your mag light don't work, your big one. It doesn't? No, it's dead. Oh, battery must be. I bet you the other one ain't going to hold up too much longer either. Yeah, uh, that one's got light on it, though. Okay. So. All right. Thanks. Sure. Bye. Bye. Sheriff's Department 911. Yes, I'm sorry to call 911. I don't know what else to do. I'm somewhere in Shilton. We just got done hitting a deer. Okay. What, right. ready, uh, yeah, hey, ready. South of North of Hot for about foot six. One forty three PM I'm not able to take a call at this time, however, if you wish to leave a voice. Thank you, Uh-oh. have a great day. Hey Jerry Scott Cohen. Uh, wondering about if you have any day shift officers to extend over or to come over all by you. Um give us a call back and I'll ask them to see if they're if they want to do it. Thank you. Sheriff's Department. Yeah, this is Sergeant Hinkley up at uh, Eagle Three. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get a hold of uh, Sheriff Eagle. Okay. 
Um, he's out at a scene right now. Yeah, I know. Uh, okay. he's, uh, he's requesting Eagle Free, and um, I need to speak at him. Okay. Um, what's your phone number? I'll check. And just so everybody's aware, Eagle Three is a helicopter flyover. Just so everyone's aware. Giving him a call. Uh, our area code nine two zero. Okay. Four six nine. Eight nine seven seven. That's Eagle P. Eagle three. Eagle three. Yes. Okay. I will try you in a moment. Call. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Sheriff's sure, for Brian. Yes. Uh, where can I go to get a temporary place for a car? Other right now. Get them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, Sheriff's sure, Department. Hi. This is Kelly at CBSI. Mm-hmm. I'm with Scott. Hey, this is NBC Collins saying they just got a press release from Eagle 3 that they're helping for a search for Teresa Halbach. I remember this from long ago, but I've actually forgotten. So, you know, I'm just going to say this. I don't know it for a fact, but I, I'm. it just feels pretty positive that the helicopter footage from the 5th was shot by Eagle 3. That's what I'm getting out of this. I don't know about the rest of you. Just wanted to drop that in. Okay. And I was just wondering if you guys had any information. Uh, nothing that I have in front of me right now, no. Okay, so if you haven't found or anything like that. Not that I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. Sir. Sure. Right. 3.12 p.m. was that call. Yeah, Hi, Jerry. Here's the moment. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Jerry. Hey, yeah, Jerry. I uh, got your message uh, some of the other guys. Wanting to know? Yeah. Uh, no, we have enough help right now. Okay. However, we don't know how long this is going to uh, go on. Okay. Would uh, any of those guys be available to maybe come back in to relieve after a while? Like what time? Um, Who's gonna, you guys both got to work tomorrow? You don't? Okay. One doesn't, one does. Okay. The I'm one that thinking. doesn't... Uh, Maybe if we uh, could have him relieve at 3 o'clock, maybe at 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock tonight? Right. He will come back at 10 tonight? Okay. Keep saying he'll come back at 10. Okay. And then, That'll be good. Have him, uh, if he could be at the office at 10, and then take a swing. Kelly's here right now. Okay. Okay. And uh, take a swing and uh, bring a car down or whatever he can. Okay. I got Kucharski headed from the office here, too. Oh, okay. Um, he was told to come out there, I think. Yeah, so. that's fine. Okay. okay. So All right. good. <clears throat> and, you, and Craig's the only other one. You don't need him out there, right? Uh, no. Okay. Not, no, that's fine. Okay. We've got, we've got Manitowoc and, and our guys here, and uh, I think that'll be fine for right now. Okay. All right. All right. Your portables must not be reaching here because we can't hear you at all. Yeah, so. I know. We, we I Sometimes I trip and sometimes I don't. Okay. All so, right. Yeah, it's not working real well here in this location. Okay. All right. All right, Jerry. Thanks, guys. Thanks, man. Jerry's department. Hi, do you guys still, I left my key to my daughter. Where are you at? By the beacon. By the beacon in Olsen? Yeah. What type of vehicle is it? Color? Cool. Where are you parked? She's live right in the back. In the back or? Yeah. Okay, and your name? Um. Your name is Stacy? Yeah. What's your last name? Is that, it's not my car. It's what? It's not my car. Whose car is it? Hey, is she there? Yeah. Okay. No, I just I just need reporting for it. What's Heather's last name? Herba. Okay. And what's the callback number? Uh, All right. Well, it's over Channel 14. Sheriff's Department. Hey, it's Wes over Channel 4 TV in Milwaukee. How are you? Just fine. Hey, good. Hey, who can I talk to about this uh, investigation of this missing girl? Uh, I don't have anybody available right now. Okay. Um... Can you uh, take a number and have them call me back? I can do that. Uh, I don't know where it will be, so... 4 9 uh, p.m. They're all busy right now on that, so... Have you seen this guy's founder yet? Well, no, we haven't... Don't know, have any information right now on it. So, what's the number? Uh, number is 414-967-5550. 5550. And it's Russ at Channel 4 in Milwaukee. 
And who's the best person to talk to about this? I may call me back. Um, I'm not real sure which investigator will call you or if the sheriff will. Okay. All right. We're getting ready to go on the air, so it's good to make a call. It's, like I said, it probably won't be right away. It's going to be a while. So you don't expect anything real soon. Okay. Okay? Bye. Sheriff's Department. Oh, yeah, Chris. This is John Deary. Uh, he's not in right now. Is you only voice mail for him? Oh, um, let me, uh, this is Tom Pierce. Uh, Pierce Photography. Okay. Um. Tom Pierce calling back. In case anyone missed that, it's um, 4.13 p.m. John and uh, Mark came and talked to me yesterday about that Teresa Hubbard sister. Okay. And someone had just called me and said that uh, they saw a Manitowoc area news crew and a lot of people. Um, right now, I don't have any information right now. Oh, I mean, uh, was in, in the area that uh, that she was at, and that's what somebody was. You know, right. They're out there doing some investigation right now. Oh, they are? Yep. Um, is um, John or Mark? Um, They're not available right now. But that, I mean, are they out on? Or are they home? They're not home. No. Oh, okay. Um, they had said when I talked to them that um, they'd let me know. Um, yeah. Well, when they yep. when they feel the time's ready, they'll give you a call. Oh. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Right, bye. Bye. Sure, Stormont. Hey, Scott. It's Kim. Yo. Where does Joyce live? <laughs> Yeah, Trimborn. Oh, that's it? Yeah. But I don't know where that is. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there once before, but I... Oh, remember. yeah, because you're too intoxicated, probably. Whatever. Whatever. Well, you know where, you know where Mason Street or Jay is? No. You don't know what Mason Street is? I'm tr I turned by Willowdale. Take a right. And go as far up as you can, so it's, and then you take her, it's right there. It's Trimborn. It goes east west. All right, I'm going up that way. I'm not letting you go until I find it. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I work for Calumet County Sheriff's Department, and guess what? She doesn't know where anything lives. 4 19 p.m. Yeah, it's funny. That's Don't hilarious. even go there. That's hilarious. You're and a funny person. Past, well, I know. That's what they say. <laughs> I'm going past... All right. What's the street? This is Jordan. I just passed Jordan. I'm on Hoover. You're on Hoover. Go north or south, I mean. I am going south. Yeah, I keep going south. I am. All right. Will I run into Trimborn? Yeah. That's the one way on top of the hill. But I'll, I bet I'll remember it from now on. I bet you will, too, because if you don't, I'll give you a heck for it. Yeah, that's <laughs> typical. <laughs> typical, typical. Thanks a lot for not wanting to work with me tomorrow. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Anything yeah. I can do for you there. No, lovely, David. Lovely. Uh, Trimborn, take a right, and then hers is the left. Yeah, it's one of those duplex, the first duplex right in the corner. Uh, I don't know if this is her or not. It's not a duplex. It's a side by side or whatever. Take a right. I did. It's not a right. It's a left. I took. Well, you told me to take a right. <laughs> you are a knucklehead. <laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out where you're at. Okay, now I'm taking a left and I'm going back down this way. We're going back down. Hang on, I'm going. I know. I think I know where it is now. I'm not sure, though. What street were you on? Hoover? I wasn't. Yes, I was. Yeah, you gotta take a left. I did. Oh, well, then it's right... This isn't her house. Huh? This isn't her house. Yeah, right? it's right in the intersection of, like, uh... Like, uh, I think it's Hoover and Chimborn. Hmm. Okay. You got it? No. Well... Uh, let me see. Let's give you the. It's it's on Trimborn. I'm on Trimborn. Where are you at? Where, what's the nearest crossroad are you at? Okay, I'm at the intersection of. Let me find out what the intersection is. I don't know what the hell it is. Oh, here, Trimborn and Coolidge. Okay. That's it. Right here it is. Yeah, right there it is. 
Trimborn and Coolidge. 1313 she's at, Trimborn. It's on the south side, or south side of the road. I got it, 1313, there's no lights on. Oh, she should be home. All right. Maybe she's taking a nappy. Okay. Go wake her up. Thanks. Sure, bye-bye. I don't know what that was about. Sheriff's from it. Did you guys call me? Uh, Mike? Yeah. Oh, hold on one second. 4.39 p.m. I'm sorry. 4.26. Sheriff's from it. Hi, uh, I locked my my keys in my vehicle. Andrews. No, there's a Slim Jim. W2654. 439 Charles PM. Guinness, 95 Pontiac Grand Am. And your phone number? One. Hey, Scott? Yeah. Cheers, from it. Hey, Scott? Yeah. Could you get a hold of that Merschberger and then give him my cell phone number? Mersh oh, Nick? Yeah, the one that's going to come up and collect that car for us. Okay. And then give him my cell phone number and I want to talk to him. Okay, we'll do. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Bye. 443. Good afternoon. This is Chrissy with ABC Security Services. Mm -hmm. I'm calling on a residential burglar alarm. Where at? It is Relevant. L E R. Where do you work? Okay. And Christy. Yes. Oh, okay. You be contact key over for us, Christy? 443. Okay. Would Wayne be around? Mailers. Hi, would Wayne be around? Um, just a moment. Thank you. 4.47 p.m. Hello. Hi, Wayne. Yeah. Scott and Kennedy County Sheriff's Department. Yeah. We get, we get an alarm at the residence on Highway 10. Yeah, and my wife is there now. All right. Yeah. Okay. So we should be okay, but... Okay. You know, okay? Yep, that sounds good. Sure, it's from it. Hey, it's got Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Um, you've got Keith Bristol coming in? Yeah, 10 o'clock, yep. Okay. Can you see if you can get a hold of three other ones? Okay. To come in to sit on the scene down here? Okay. Right. Uh, three of them to come in now or at 10? Oh, to come in at 10 o'clock and release okay. the ones that are here. Or should 5 30, I have to, to 5 38 p.m. Over? Yeah, I don't know how long. It's probably going to be an all night shift. Okay. All right. So, I, will, uh, I can do some calling around and see. I don't know. Pretty much people on the days off are out there already. <laughs> okay. So, uh, try Wally. Try uh, um, the other patrol. Um, try. Huh? Jim, yeah, try, you know, Jim Rogers, uh, Mavis, all those guys. Uh, try anybody that can we can get out here, including, you know, uh, uh, jailers, uh, dispatchers, um, whoever you can get a hold of. Okay. Give everybody, anybody that you can get. Uh, what we need them to do is kind of secure the scene uh, this evening along with Manitowoc County. Okay, so just pretty much just secure it and watch so nobody comes in or out, right? That's it, yeah. Okay. All right, so three others, right? Yeah, we got Yeah, we got one. If we can get all the three more, that would be great. Okay. All right, how, any particular way you want me to do this, Jerry, or, um, or just go ahead and call? Uh, we called the patrol. We got everybody on day off basically here. Let's start start jail and go from there. Uh, give Steve a call. Is Steve off? Here? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, he's on his day off. Okay, give him a call. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and the jailers we can get a hold of to come out here. Okay. Yeah, just go. You, you want to work? Do I want to work? I'm not going to work all night. Okay, uh, <laughs> Maybe until like 3 or something I could do it, but not yeah, all night. Yeah, it's, it's basically be an all nighter. Yeah, okay. All right, I will see what I can do. Um, Where did you find that station area? Where do you got that? Did you set that up at all for your media uh, thing? Wherever the, wherever the media is at right now. Okay. All right. We're going we're gonna to go to them. Okay. Wherever, wherever they're at. Wherever they're at. Okay, yeah. that's at 9 p.m., right? 9 p.m. Okay. All right, I will do what I can do, and then you want me to give you a call back, or yeah, what? Give me a call back. Let okay, we we'll do it here. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Sure, bye. Okay.
What's that? What are you getting? A Q and forty seven? What's that? Channel four, it's Russ. Hi, Russ. Scott at Cavan County Sheriff's Department. Hey, how are um, you? Just calling you back. Do you have any um, news media release at the staging area at Q and 147 at 9 p.m.? 9 p.m. What yes. Is, what, I'm getting ready to go on the news now. What can you tell me? I about? can't tell you anything. I'm sorry, Russ. I'm just relaying the news conference for you. So okay. they'll relay any information they got for you there. Okay. All, All right. Have you, uh, you guys found a body? What's that? I can't tell you anything, Russ. I, okay. What did I just say? <laughs> I can't tell you nothing. Um, okay. I'm sorry I couldn't, but I'm not authorized to do that. So okay. 9 p.m. at Q and 147 is the location. I think that's where all the media is at right now. Okay. You're okay. Thank, thank you. Sure. Okay. Bye. Bye. Five forty-one p.m. Forty-seven p.m. Hello. Hi, Chuck Scott at Sheriff's Department. Hi, Scott. How you doing? <laughs> Are you real busy tonight? <laughs> no. What's that? Okay. Um, well, they found the vehicle for that Hallback girl I was missing um, at Avery's Junkyard, and they're looking for people to hold the crime scene until tomorrow morning. So it'll probably be like from ten o'clock tonight till um, tomorrow morning. Sometime. Where's this at? Over by Michigan. Okay. Yeah, I got Jim coming in at ten. 
And uh, Keith Ristol's coming in. What but. with the? I didn't know anything about Hallbach thing. Like oh, they had a missing girl uh, from Hilbert yeah. area, and they haven't heard from her since Monday. And uh, now they just located her vehicle. Okay. In, in the junkyard up at, at Steve Avery, the one that was acquitted. Not too long ago, I was in prison for 18 years. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So they found the vehicle up there um, this afternoon, and now they're holding the crime scene until tomorrow morning, I'm thinking, for sure. Okay. So. Yeah, I guess I can come over. I'm okay. going to have to grab something to eat quick. And oh, yeah. It'll be first 10 o'clock, Jim. Or, Chuck, I mean. 10 o'clock. Yeah, 10 o'clock tonight. Okay. And then uh, that way, if you want to take a rest or something like that. All right. And then uh, bring some reading material or whatever, because, you know, <laughs> yeah. probably just be sitting in a vehicle pretty much all night. So. Okay. Um, yeah, that and some clothes. So, yeah. rain gear. Well, I wasn't going to come naked. So. Yeah, I sure don't hold that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, 10 o'clock then, Jim. Uh, Chuck, okay? Okay. okay. Thanks. Yep. Bye bye. bye. Huh. About 48 p.m. Still continuing. Just didn't break into another call. So many times this happens. Moving on. Hey, you busy tonight? Right. Let me back yeah. up. Who is this one? Hey, Al. Hey, Roy. Yeah. Scott. Yeah. Hey, you busy tonight? Am I busy? Yeah. Or did you want to make a lot of money? <laughs> um, here's the deal. They found uh, they found that Hallbox vehicle, the one that was missing. They found that over in Avery's junkyard. Oh. Okay. So they're looking for people to hold the scene overnight. Oh. So. Um. No, I don't. No, I don't think so. Okay. Moving on. Damien Hurst. Yeah. How's it going? Good. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, why? Oh, uh, because we got some, if you want to make some easy money, we got a little project for you. A project? Yeah. I'm not in the project. Oh, uh, it's securing a crime scene. What's what's the deal? Um, they found that Hallbox vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, it's over in Mishkat. Okay. And they want people to hold the crime scene until tomorrow morning. So if you'd want to, you can take a vehicle over there and sit there from like 10 o'clock tonight till sometime tomorrow morning. And they release you. Chuck and Jim are coming in and Risto's coming in. Oh, how many people are they looking for? No, oh, they're looking for four, and I got three right now. You got three? Yeah. How many more people you got to call? Um... I don't know. I'm just kind of flipping through here. <laughs> oh. there isn't really, I think I got pretty much everybody. Are they all taking this? Same vehicle, riding together kind of deal? No, oh, they're taking the transport squads up there. Oh, okay. Because they got to, I think they got to kind of surround the perimeter, you know, type they, thing. Oh, yeah, that way. So it's pretty much just uh, watching to make sure nobody comes in and and uh, whatever else, you know, read your okay. read materials or whatever. Yeah. So, but it's up to you. Um. Hold on here. Uh, why don't you just keep calling people and I'll okay. give you a call back and if you find somebody, find somebody. I'll okay. You know. All right. We'll do it, Damien. Yep. Bye. Bye. Sure, Mr. Spermit. What's that? Kurt, um, did you want to hold a crime scene tonight from 10 o'clock till morning hours? Are you going to be pretty tired from this shift? 10 o'clock till morning? Matt Montoni? Yeah. I can do that. You can do that. I got to call a couple other full timers yet, and uh, I'll send you a message, and we'll see. But if you want to, um, they're doing it from 10 o'clock though. How long do you got to work till? Um, till 11, but I could probably get chilled early. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, power shift coming in. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, let me do some of the calling. I'll send you a message, but I think it's going to be pretty much planned on it. So. Okay. What do I got? Who else went out there? Is it just? Uh, no, it's going to be you, Jim, Chuck, and Bristol. And. Okay. Yeah, you guys taking transfer squads up there, and then uh, pretty much just sitting out there, make sure nobody comes in or out of the crime scene, and and. Uh, and just watch that, you know, from 10 o'clock till sometime in the morning. It's pretty much the whole third shift, you know. Okay. So. Okay. I uh, assume, like, it's a wear plain clothes or? Um, yeah, you don't have a county uniform yet, huh? 
Well, I do, but the patches aren't really on it, but it's raining anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. If you got, well, yeah, just, I guess whatever you can, you know, just bring a badge or, I don't know, if you have a badge yet. No, I have uh, a badge because I'm only part-time. Oh, yeah. Um, just grab your whole scheme stuff or something. That'd be fine, too. Whatever uh, you got. I could just wear my new Holstein stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you want to just come up in that, that'd be fine. I don't think that should be a problem. Okay. If it is, I'll let you know. I'll give Jerry a call, so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll, I'll just try to find out. I'll call you and see. Okay. All right. Sound good. Yep. Bye. Bye. It's 5.55 p.m. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. I don't think I go. I don't think it should be possible. Yeah, I know. I do that too. I'm trying to think. Everybody's pretty much working, except for nobody. <laughs> 5 57 p.m. Hello. Hi, Patty. Stay four. Hello. Hi, is uh, Kim there? Um, yeah, hold on. Thank you. I can't get enough talking to you tonight. Hello? Bubs. Yeah. I can't get enough talking to you tonight. No, I'm watching that. I'm watching the news. Oh, okay. That's why I'm calling you. Oh. Um, they're looking for somebody to hold a crime scene overnight. I don't know if you're interested. To hold the crime scene overnight? Yeah. Pretty much just sit out there and make sure nobody comes in or out. What time do I have to go? 10 p.m. until early morning hours. Probably like 6, I'm thinking. Do I have to be there the whole time? Yeah. I mean, can we do partial, partial shift? No. We don't? <laughs> I don't know. I, they're doing full the whole time is what we're doing, I think. Because I got Chuck and Jim doing the full shift, and Risto's coming and doing the full shift. And um, I figured we'd better call you up because uh, Kurt said he would, he'd take it. So, so do we got to sit there by ourselves or yep, what? Yep, pretty much. Where do we have to go? Up by a junkyard. <laughs> it's not fun. I did it for uh, Wagner's death when they had that. You just sit out in the middle of nowhere and you just sit in your vehicle and. What are the What are the officers like? Gonna work it through the night? Yeah, they're gonna. Well, they gotta hold it all. They gotta hold the crime scene overnight. I think until tomorrow morning. Uh huh. And then they're gonna come back. That way, they don't have to get another search warrant. So I should stay awake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, What's that? Yeah, hang on a second. Okay. I gotta stay awake? Oh my god. What? Steve. Oh, real good. Thanks a lot. I'm Steve. I'm Steve. Oh, real good. Thanks a lot. I'm oh, not bad up. That was just horrible. Jeez. I'm kind of concentrating on several things oh, at the same man. time. All right? Back off. Me. Boy, I better get a big hug next time. All right, yeah. fine. <laughs> the card was very nice but it's from the McCarthy family, but Oh, is it? Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Good. Um, yeah, I can do 10 to 6. What's that? I can do 10 to 6. 10 to 6? Where okay. do I have to be in it? What uh, coming up at the Sheriff's Department at 10 o'clock. No later, because they'll probably be leaving right away. Who is leaving? Well, all those other guys are coming up here. Aristo, Chuck, and Jim. Okay. So, either up no later than 10. Do I have to wear my uniform? Or? I'd wear your uniform, yep, and then bring some... Reading you, material? <laughs> reading material, uh, yeah, any little whatever you got, little gadgets or whatever you want to do to pass the time because it, it's kind of dead time, you know. Okay. So whatever reading material, and then if you got some warm clothes or if you got a rain jacket in case you walk or all Moving or on. So oh. them, but no later than 10, no camel. Okay, Six oh three. Hi, this is Sheriff Jerry Poggle. I'm not able to take a call at this, and I will return your call as soon as possible. Thank you, and have a great day. Hey, Jerry, it's Scott calling. Um, I have Jim Rogers coming in, Chuck Mavis, um, and Kim Retlick, along with Keith Risto. They're coming for your meeting at the Sheriff's Department at 10 p.m. and then heading out to your direction. Um, if there's a problem with those people or something, then give me a call back. Uh, this is Wendy and RN calling from Kelly. Sheriff's Department 911. Hi, this is Wendy and RN calling from Calumet Homestead. We have a resident who's a bit hypoxic, short of breath, okay. and needs... Is she down there? 
CMC in Elizabeth Park. 317, copy. Cheers, Clarence. Hey, Scott, C2761. Yeah. I'm trying to find a phone number for Jay Schwartz. He lives out on Highway 151. Okay. And the number I just called, uh, I got somebody else. Must have, must have changed his phone number. He lives at W572 Highway 151. W572. Yep. Six forty p.m. I think this is a re a relevant call. Interview? Yeah. yeah. The, what wasn't him? Is that Paul Schmitz? No. Nope. Really? No. Nope. That deer was all legit. It was so squeaky clean. It was unbelievable. Really? Yeah. The, it was definitely shot with an arrow. And okay. It, and it was definitely killed. Moving on. He was very good hole, right? He had the whole. <laughs> he had the whole yeah. and register, register, and Yeah. We. Year that I came up with, uh, probably not. Yeah. Probably next time. Let's just put Schwartz. All right. Hi, how are you? I'm glad you guys are good. Here's Department. Hi, how are you? I'm glad you guys are good here at Heck and so on and so forth. Uh, just offering if you guys need any help. All right, now we should be good. You sure? Yep. Can I leave my name and number in case you need somebody? Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Be Randy Boy. He is in Boy, O E G H. That's uh, 920 okay. 733 okay. 0075. Okay, Randy. Thanks for the offer. Oh, no problem. Anything you guys need, just holler. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sure. Bye. Bye. -bye. That was 6.42 p.m. Sure, it's tournament. Yeah. This is Leroy Smith. Say, I'm being evicted from here on 1030 Diane Street Apartment. Can you inform on. me? Okay, I check into it. Okay. Kelly McConey, 911. Yeah, do you have a report of an accident on Highway 10? Um, on Highway 10, Larry? Uh, Moving on. See, no, okay. For the roadway. Hi. Oh, my God, there's... 50. Oh, there's shit. Okay. We don't have ambulance up here. What kind of engine? Put you on hold. I'm going to have her get on with you, okay? Problem. Hold. Stay on hold. 35 is Patty. She's at the scene. Do you want to talk to her? Hello? Hello? Hello. Hi, sorry about that. That's uh, okay. Um, A gentleman came in with a missing person... Bulletin, a piece of paper to yep. stick it up. And I saw her today at Walmart with my mom. At, at where? Walmart. What one? Here in Sheboygan. In Sheboygan? Mm hmm. Okay. What time was that? 6 6 30. Okay. Okay. So 9 54 p.m. You saw her. Your first name? Brenda. Brenda. Brenda, what's your middle initial? L. And your last name? Yen. Can you spell that, please? J E N T S T A. T as in Tom? Yes. Okay. And your your uh, uh, callback number we could call you back at? 331 0587. We have some investigators working on this. I'm going to pass this information on to them. Okay. And they they will follow up on it, obviously, immediately. And um, that, the guy that what, dropped off the piece of paper had asked if anybody was with her, and I said I didn't see anybody with her, but there was a gentleman in the back of her. This gentleman, what did he look like? He's a black fellow, very tall, um, husky. Okay. Okay. And he was behind her. Did it look yeah. like they were together? I don't... To me, it didn't look like they were together. She was just looking at something, and I had passed them. Okay. But I remember her, her eyes, her dark eyes. Do you remember what she was wearing, by chance? She had blue jeans on. The shirt, I don't remember what it had on it. Okay. But she was wearing blue jeans. Okay. 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 Um, I have your information. Oh, one other thing. Your date of birth? 8-15-75. Okay. 
I do thank you very, very much, and I'm going to pass this along immediately. All right. Hopefully you guys can find her. Yes, we hopefully too. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, Scooby, she said that was the Sheboygan Walmart. That's what she identified. And I just don't remember an interview with this with this woman, but I, I could be just not remembering. Sheboygan Walmart. And that's quite a haul from Well I, I know from Calumet it's certainly a haul. Uh, not quite as far I don't I, I'm sure from uh Manitowoc. Interesting call. Moving on. Bye. Bye bye. Doing Hello? Oh. Patty, you still there? Yeah, I am. Okay, how is everybody doing? Well, okay. I think her face might be blowing up from the airbag. We do. We do. No, no, no. Get up. Kelly, my sheriff's department. Hey, I know you guys are really busy, but can I pop his phone number, please? Poppy's sure. Also, we're also getting some information here from sites of her. So. Of what? Of her sites of her being seen elsewhere. Oh, okay. Who am I talking to? Keep. I'll be oh. down there shortly. We're right on the right. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, okay. Well, not, they just need to be compiled, and I know. we'll uh, take care of that in the morning. Um, hey, Lori, where's Judge Poppy's number in here? I'm looking, Jay. So 10 o'clock at night, they're looking to find Judge Poppy, I'm guessing, to issue another search warrant. I forgot about this, actually. Oh, go the other way. Oh, Judge Poppy. Home phone? Yeah. 756-3559. Would you like a cell phone? 3559. Got it. Nope, I tried that already. Okay, thanks. All right, thanks. Bye. Kelly, my county sheriff's department. Hello, can I help you? Here. Yep, hello. Is this Joe? Ten fifty eight. Eleven ten. And that's it. Wow, we made it. So definitely some interesting calls. I put a lot of questions, a lot of the questions in the private chat. Um, I think you've answered quite a few of them along the way. But. Okay. Well, let's take a look, and um, I'll see what we got. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but as we moved past um, probably the 8 o'clock range, there's a huge, the, the calls were like, there was like almost nothing on Channel 7, which I found very strange. But we got what we got. Uh, of course, so they spent a lot of time trying to, you know, get coverage. Uh, let's see your private chat here. Um, Trav says, question of, I've mad at myself. I've missed a, the last couple of readings with the crew. So I want to ask a question, seeing as T.H. Teresa was shot and then burned, did they find any bullets in the fire pit? No, they did not. Lead would clearly have melted, but no, not, not any uh, thing like that that we were aware of. If they did, they, they didn't tell anybody about it. Um, Danny Brewer fan... We have heard that what that whole rumor could call before, right? Yes, we heard that um, that call. It was actually we got that call, believe it or not, from Manitowoc County. They recorded that call between Rumiker and um, Uyghur. That's what. So this is Rumiker calling Calumet. They get connected. We don't get to hear from the connected part from Calumet, but we get to hear it from Manitowoc. Strange, right? <laughs> um, Danny Brewer fan has anyone ever heard of a deer strike call that could be for the witness 
to the repo truck drive. Um, I haven't. Because as I recall, that was later in the evening. So I have not. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist at, at all, as, as you guys have seen. The, I'm 100% I'm positive we don't have every call. These calls were called. Um, so I haven't. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist, and I just could not be remembering. Uh, Duke is really astute about these calls, too. Maybe he can throw in and answer that. Uh, Jane of Dean, was she promised a prize for finding the calm stress about Pam of God? <laughs> um, Yeah, we've already answered that one. Okay. Now, just touch on this, and again, from Anthony Hills, was who saw Pam sitting in the back of the car, squad car, laughing at? Yeah, I just, I don't remember. I do remember hearing that before, and I just, I can't put anything to that. Somebody mentioned that it might be Earl that said it, but I don't remember who either. Yeah, yeah. I just can't recall. Uh, another one from Anthony. I think I missed this one. What's the dispatch call channel going on in the background? That's channel one. And, you know, I, I mail, they're, they're really terrible quality. Uh, I mean, like really bad. Uh, almost giving you a headache bad. Um, that may be something we'll cover at a separate time. Uh, because... Many of those are, are you know, just like these these dispatch calls. They're irrelevant. Um, but I'll take a listen and again and see if there's anything worth going through. I'm sure there's probably some segments that may be interesting. And but I think I want to set that just like I did with the Manitowoc dispatch and radio radio calls. I, that's a separate. I'm gonna, I, I, if I do it, it's going to be done separately. Um, cabin owned by Candy's father-in-law. What a strange thing to say. Yep. Um, a, a year, a year ago, they were doing reports involving Stephen and the property. Were they watching him? Well, this this is that was from Danny's Bur Danny Brewer's fan, and this was uh, concerning Marie, and potentially I, I don't know what else it could have been potentially referring to, but uh, certainly uh, the uh, the Marie stuff could have started in late '04, and that could have been what um, the Gary Steer is talking about. He may have handled that investigation. Uh, Danny Brewer fan. Why does the dispatcher in Calumet County seem so disgusted with Stephen Avery and everyone else in the department claims to not know anything about the family like they're independent? Yeah, we catch that uh, in, in both Manitowoc and Calumet calls. You know, even that one dispatcher said it's the Stephen Avery junkyard and it wasn't Stephen's. He had no ownership of that property. I think even by that time it was Chuck and Earl's. Chuck was the was definitely the owner and Earl had some interest in it, whatever. Um from Scooby, so that are they calling off duty law enforcement? Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. And the same thing happened in Manitowoc as we all know. We went through a lot of that. They were trying to schedule people to come in and work. Uh, James Crane, why five people to watch the car? What did they consider the crime scene? They only found the car. Well, they, they took the property. So they were skip, they, they sketched, uh, uh, put people all around the property, you know, or certainly any entrance points, I, I would imagine. I don't think we know exactly where all they were. And they uh, they had Q and Wolf 47. Uh, I think they, they had uh, probably Manitowoc or whoever. They had that watched. They had the that area there at Avery Road blocked. So it was a pretty large area that they had to. And it wasn't just there. 
and we'll see as we go on. We know that they there are other uh, entry points to that area that they they staged uh, a squad car. Okay, from um, K, the call about the one car. Oh, police report was taken by Gary. Who would that be? Yeah, that was that was Gary Steer, S T E I R. He's pretty heavily involved in the case. Don't hear a lot from him specifically, but if you look at the case of reports, he he writes several reports. Yeah, you answered it, Cherie. Gary Steer. That's that's his name. Yeah. Uh, what else we got here that we didn't answer? Uh, Jay, was that JP? I guess that Poggle Mobile. Why didn't Pog leave a message? Well, you know, there's some debate about that. Um, I, I can't answer it directly because I, I don't know. I can only speculate, and, and I will, is that if he knew that she was calling, and I'm not saying he did, uh, he knew it wouldn't be a recorded official call. So he forced, I guess he kind of forced the issue. I, I don't really know. You know, I, I can just guess and, and and not know for sure. So I guess that's that, that's just one possibility. Maybe he was busy and just didn't answer his phone. I, I, I don't know. Um, Danny Bruce fan. If they had, if they find a car in the back of my 40 acres, do they automatically get control over the whole project? A property what about the 40 acres of my neighbors close to the car yeah that's a that's an interesting thing uh, <laughs> you know it, laying claim to the entire property when they've only found the car and nothing else um i'm not sure how much i, I don't think lawyer ar argued that at all and i can see your point you know and they didn't open it either they didn't have anything but a car Nothing. So, I guess from us, uh, you know, looking at individual rights or whatever, to be able to say, hey, we're just going to take over your entire property, get out, because we found the car right here, and we didn't, we don't have anything else, but hey, we're going to take your property. Pretty, I think it's a pretty interesting legal argument. I'm not a lawyer, Cherie. What, what do you think about that? It, it looks like, seems like they just did whatever they wanted to get in this uh, area and have gotten away with it yep. so far. Yep. But, That's you know, I, I agree, too, that they shouldn't have been able to do what they did, take it up, take over the whole property and keep it for, what, 12 days, 10 days? I can't remember how long it was. Well, it, was for, it was from the, it was around, well, let's just say around noon on the 5th until the afternoon of the 12th so you know five oh, okay. uh, eight days basically they they occupied that property yeah that <clears throat> shouldn't have been allowed in my opinion well yeah i mean at least certainly not until they got that rav back to the lab and said oh well you know we got uh teresa's blood and steven's blood so they say could they, should they have been able to do that, which was uh, several days later, you know. Actually, if you want to get right down to it, they didn't get an official sample of Teresa's DNA until after the 20th. It was after the 21st because Vassminder didn't pick up those pap smears from uh, Belkin or whatever that hospital was where the Teresa's pap smears were, were stored. He didn't pick those up the 21st of November. So how could they, I mean, other than getting a familial, a maternal match with Karen Hallbach, I guess they could do that and say, well, yeah, this is, you know. But they didn't have Teresa's DNA until after, well, yeah, I mean, I think it takes more than a day to run a DNA sample. So until after November 21st. It's an interesting thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, James Crane. So, what is the crime scene? Yeah, I guess they consider that whole property the crime scene. Uh, James Crane, uh, you hit a deer. Do you know when where Bobby lives? 
Yeah, that's yeah, I don't know. that's true. Danny Brewer, are they starting a more locally focused search for Teresa, or just finding people to stand around the Rav? Well, uh, for like I said earlier, uh, they placed people all over the property, and they had checkpoints at the various intersections where um, other roads came into 147. So, and then then and also at Avery Road. And you know, eventually, I don't know if they did it the night. They may have done it the night of the fifth. I can't remember, but certainly by the sixth, they stationed someone over at the Redont Deer Camp. Uh, at that burn barrel as well. Um, Anthony Hills, how many other suspects other than Tom Pierce called dispatch asking about Teresa when the word got out? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. I, I can't totally answer that. Um, there were some other calls, though. Um, yeah, Andy had to leave us. He said, good night, good night, uh, Miss Falkham, Falkham's Razor. Um, Scooby, yeah, who did she see at Walmart? Yeah, TH, yeah. And then James Crane, last one we have, wasn't the sighting at Walmart played down by Ron Hilgus. I thought he called the dispatch on that. Um, I don't remember that, but you could be right, James. It's just probably another call that I'm just not recalling, not, not, not remembering. So that's all That's all you had marked as private. And I, I tried to watch as we were going, but I, I couldn't flip back and forth quick enough and trying to skip through those calls. So... Hey, looky there. It's only 8.20. We only went on two hours and 20 minutes. What a short open mic. How crazy is that? Kay may already even be asleep. <laughs> oh, no, she's not. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I'm going to I'm not going to hold everybody. Let's get final thoughts here right quick and let everybody go. So, Kay. Yeah, I just it's just interesting that out of all those calls, they find the car and no one is interested in Teresa Hallbach. I mean, I guess there was one, but was there more than one person um, who said mentioned her? Not not really. I mean I mean especially you you found the car, it's like is there any sign of Teresa around there? I mean, did, did you guys see her? I mean, Nothing. the goal would be to find the person, <laughs> the missing person. They're so wrapped up in this car. Uh, it's bizarre. I agree. I don't know. And the reactions of the people on those calls, it, it's just, I don't know. It all feels fishy, but maybe I have uh, a bias created in my head. Yeah, and I try not to, and I, but I, I totally understand it. I'm kind of the same way. I have this, I'm jaded, I guess, because I've been in it so long, and there are just things that I see I can't let go. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, good to hear. Good to hear them all. Absolutely. All righty. Well, thank you, Kay. Appreciate you being here and your comments. Cherie, final thoughts? I agree. Very interesting and very strange that that they weren't worried about her, you know whether she was in the car or not. Just finding the car. It's very fishy. I'm surprised that more wasn't made of it, you know, in the trial. Maybe it was. I, do you remember anything being said about that in the trial? Uh, I do think it was brought up, but again, I, it, it just seemed like there was no real urgency. Uh, especially around this time uh, about finding her. Well, thank you very much. We learn a lot every time we hear it. Hear these. Absolutely. Absolutely. All righty. Thank you, uh, Cherie. Hey, there's Doc. He told me to try to come, but if he couldn't, he'd, he'd certainly listen in. Uh, yeah, I think it was an interesting podcast, you know. 
it's a pain in the ass to skip through the irrelevance, but they are what they are. Uh, Anthony, what are Mike and Ryan, Mike and Ryan saying right now? Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Alrighty, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it here, and uh, probably, uh, I'm probably uh, at least for a, a couple of weeks. I may try to, if I can. I don't know. I'm going to say this. I don't know if I can do it or not, but I'm going to try to kind of double up on the open mic because I really want to get through the dispatch or not. Sorry, I'm saying the depositions. We've only got a few left and uh, we get that wrapped up. You know, one of the last one is uh, Gene Cachet, and it, it's a really interesting. I think people are going to pull out things that they probably have forgotten about, about uh, what he, the things that he said in his deposition. Others too, but. You've got Larry Conrad and Couchet and uh, Fred Nicholson or something like that. I think so. Let's see here. I can look. I, I don't remember right. that name, it, you know, but he's one of the last ones, so he must. Uh, let's see. It seems like the more important ones are toward the end, but no, not necessarily, I guess. Well, no, because, yeah, he, he's kind of an important one. Um, you know, he was a detective. Back in the 90s, or I, yeah, I think actually in the, yeah, he'd been there a long time. And uh, let's see, the, let's see, da, 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 da. we did the Vorick, and we did Peterson. We got Larry Conrad, he's another detective, Fred Nicholson. I'm not sure, and, and Coburn, I think, is the last one on the 13th. And then after that, the last one. Is um, Jean Couchet? That's the twenty sixth. So yeah, we got several interesting ones coming up. You know, Nicholson. Um, I know a lot of people don't know. Um, Nick, there was in ninety five or ninety six. You know, Couchet was the head of the detective unit there in Manitowoc, and he questioned these guys and. It was kind of dance around this call that Colburn, this this jail call the, that when Colburn was a the jailer, got this call uh, from this detective that said he had this person saying, "Hey, you guys locked somebody. You locked up the wrong guy." It dances around that. I'll, I'll try to find that document. It's a really interesting one. Sunshine Christina's one that found it. It's a really interesting document. Anyway, I'm going to get us on out of here. Didn't mean to get sidetracked off into that too much. Uh, yeah, really appreciate everyone that's uh, came and joined us on uh, and going through these dispatch calls. And in the coming weeks, we're gonna, I'm going to try to ramp up a little bit and get some this one project done and can, continue to go through this and uh, see what else we can get it to. You never know. Anyway, if you like what we're doing, give us a like, a share, subscribe to the channel if you wish, turn on the notification bell. With that said, I'm going to say this has been a foul play production.